So Christina, you know how to open Excel? Yes. Okay, why don't you go on and do that? All right. I'm just going to come down here to the bottom and... There, there it go. is. So when you have worked with Excel before, what version have you been using? Um, I have been using 2010 and you know I migrated to that from 2003 so okay. it's a big leap for me. It was a big leap wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And some people are coming from 2007, some people are coming from 2003. What was the big difference for you? What did you notice the most about the difference? Definitely the ribbon. Okay right. In the past we had a menu bar, file, edit, view, insert and so forth and you clicked on that and you had a drop down menu right? Mm -hmm. Now we have these ribbons and so that's our major difference here, and we're going to explore those um, in a little while, in a later module. But that's one of the big differences, and that's probably the one thing people struggle the most to get used to. But if you're like me, once you get used to it, it's actually better. It's I think little, so, too. It's a little more intuitive. So let's just talk about Excel itself. What do you know about Excel? What do we use it for? Well, I typically go to Excel when I want to organize numbers. Okay. What kinds of numbers? Um, you know, maybe sales figures, sure. uh, invoicing, that sort of thing. Yeah, Excel allows us to take data of any type and manipulate it or store it in a way that we can pull the information up and use it. But we can also use it to create summaries of data. We can use it to create calendars. Mm -hmm. um, we can do it for, we can use it for invoices. There's a lot of different applications to Excel, but the main thing about Excel is it allows us to do all these calculations. And it's built in formulas that we can use. And we'll be exploring those, of course, in a later module too. Okay. Now, right. you're looking at Excel. What do you notice about the screen and the layout of Excel? Well, it, it seems to be very structured. Right. We have columns. Columns go up and down. Think about a mansion, for example, and you've got the mansion columns. And the columns are labeled A, B, C, D, and so forth. Guess how many columns there are? I don't know. Gosh, it looks like there's a bunch on this, almost 20 something. Is there Well, more there than that? yeah, there are 16,384 columns. Wow, that's a lot of columns. It sure <laughs> is. When I first started teaching Excel, there were 256 columns. Now, <laughs> there's 16,000 plus. So the last column is labeled XFD cuz once you get to Z, we go up, we start over with AA, AB and okay. so forth. Okay. Now we also have rows. And the way to remember rows, they run left to right and you know in a movie theater, we have rows of seats running across. So left to right and they're labeled 1 2 3 4. You want to take a stab at how many rows are there? Oh, I don't know. Is there 65,000 of those too? Well, you're doing a little bit better, and at one point you would have been right on the money. When I first started teaching Excel, there were a little over 8,000 rows. There are over a million rows. Oh, wow. In fact, there's 1,048,576 rows. Wow, that's a lot of rows, too. So the very, very last cell on this worksheet, and we call the sheet with the rows and the columns a worksheet, mm -hmm. <laughs> XF. D, 1,048,576. Oh, okay. You want to go see that cell? Sure, let's do it. Okay. So if you look at the top of your keyboard, you should have an F5 key. Do you see that? I do. Okay, go on and press that. That is our go-to key. And when we use that, we can actually type in a cell reference. So, for example, we could type in AA100 and hit enter, and it would go to that. Go on and do that one just so you can see how this works. And see, you'll notice that your active cell is way down here. We could scroll a little bit and show people where we are. And notice that you have a highlight up here at the AA. Mm -hmm. And at the row 100, it's highlighted too. So you can always look at your columns and your rows headings, and it will tell you which cell you're in. It also tells you up in the top left corner, and I'm going to point up here just for a moment for you. Top left corner tells you which cell is your active cell. Okay, so let's do F5 again and let's find that last cell. Okay. Okay, so let's go on and type in that cell reference. And I always have to read it because these numbers are so huge for me. It's XFD and then it's 1048576. And let's hit enter or click OK. And notice, you're way down here, look at this, XFD, you see the column heading. You can see the boundary or the outside of the worksheet. 
And over there to the left, you see your row heading 1 million 400 that's whatever it is. It's a huge number. That's really cool. <laughs> it is pretty crazy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, there is a real quick way to go to cell A1. Okay, good. I think the arrow keys would take a while. So you're going to hold down your control key on your keyboard, mm -hmm. and then up in the top right section of your keyboard, there should be a home key. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? I do. All right. Press control plus home. Okay. And notice, there we are back in cell A1. Oh, that's great. So anytime, anywhere in a spreadsheet, if you want to go back to that very first cell, mm -hmm. control home will always take you there. In a later module, we're going to look at a bunch of keyboard shortcuts. So we are looking at the bottom of the screen. You have sheet one. Do you oh, see that? I do. Sheet two. Yeah, there's a couple more there. And sheet three. Now, why would I need more than one sheet? Okay, first of all, a workbook is the overall file. Mm -hmm. So sheet one, sheet two, and sheet three make up a workbook. Your individual sheet tabs are worksheets. Okay. One of the ways you might would use this is sheet one might would be data from first quarter. Oh, sheet okay. two could be data from second quarter. Sheet three from the third. And you could add sheets, which we'll do in a later module. And you could even do calculations that look at different cells on different sheets and have a totals worksheet too. Oh, that's great. Okay, great. So that would be the reason to use those. Now one other thing, some people don't like to have multiple worksheets open. So you can change that. It's a default setting to have three worksheets open. Where would I change that? So we can go to the File tab and we actually can change that default. Okay. Now we call this the Backstage View. And this is everything to do with the file. So save, open, close, and so forth. Oh, okay. Notice down next to the last you have an option called Options. <laughs> All right. If you'll click on that, you'll see this dialog box pops up. And one of the last things on the screen that we're seeing right now is it include this many sheets. Do you see that near the bottom of the oh, list? Oh, right here. I see right. that. And it says three. Gotcha. So if you just wanted one, you could change that to one, click OK. And from then on, every time you opened up a new file in Excel, it would only have one worksheet. Oh, that's great. That's great to know. So mm -hmm. I can customize it just for right. me. You can. You could make it multiple. You know, you could do four or five. But let's go back to three just for the sake of the instructional process here and click OK. And that pretty much in a nutshell is Excel as far as the columns, the rows, and the worksheets. Let me just make sure that I have this straight. So we have a worksheet and I can have more than one worksheet. Right. And we've got this structure of columns that have a letter heading and then rows that have a number heading. And if I want to make a change to the overall file, then I would go to Files, Options, and then this is called the Backstage View, is that right? right? Okay. The backstage. So that's the Backstage View. No, I think I got it. I'm ready to do something in here. This is exciting. Fantastic. What we're going to do next is look at adding and changing workbooks and exploring a little bit more into the Excel application.